My name is Chief Warrant Officer Mike Gulley, and I want to thank you for taking the time today to participate in this Remembrance Day service. Even in the challenging times we live in today, it's important for us to remember together, even if we can't actually be together. For all of us, 2020 will likely be recalled as a time when society needed to band together to make universal sacrifice for the greater good and a better future. Today, we are sacrificing our social activities, time with family, and the freedom to travel abroad as we please. This reminds me of hearing the stories from my grandparents of the sacrifices they had to make during the Second World War. Back in those days, they told me, items much needed for the war effort were rationed. Canadians became avid recyclers of material that could be repurposed for the war effort. Men were conscripted or otherwise enrolled into military service here in Canada so that volunteers could serve overseas in Europe or the Pacific. For six years, Canadians here at home had to endure material shortages as well as the uncertainty of their loved one's safety. They also worried about the outcome and hoped they would remain free citizens in a great country, not conquered and oppressed. Thankfully, they did. And we are very lucky to live in a free society today. It has been 118 years since the Canadian Army came back from the South African War. Since then, Canada participated in the Great War, the Second World War, the Korean War, various peacekeeping missions. And only six years ago, Canadians came home from the Afghan War. To say someone comes back from a war is a reference to a physical return from the war zone. All the generations who served in war, war zones, or peace support operations likely did not return the same people as they were when they left. And we are here to remember the many who never returned at all. Technology has changed a lot since the South African War ended in 1902. But the nature of warfare remains violent, tragic, and full of loss. People are destroyed physically and mentally. Families are torn by missing or lost loved ones. The thirst, fear, and exhaustion felt by the soldiers in the Great War were felt by our current veterans in the deserts of Afghanistan only a few years ago, and more recently in Iraq. The universal joy of surviving an attack is often overtaken by the guilt that others did not. For soldiers, this stuff hasn't changed, I'm sure, since wars began. History is filled with state and non-state actors who prey on the weak and oppress those they feel are either inferior to them or who they should dominate and control. Regardless of their reasoning, it counters the Canadian values of freedom, equality, respect, and the rule of law. The recent conflicts in Afghanistan and Iraq are prime examples. The Afghan and Iraqi people I've met on my tours there are no different than anyone else I've met. Most of them want a better life for their children. They want access to education, health care, and the opportunities that come with security. It's hard to hold down a job or go to school when you are under a real threat of violence for doing so. In Iraq, a radically violent group called Daesh went after a group of people because they had different religious beliefs, the Yazidi people. Daesh is commonly known as ISIS. I prefer to use the term Daesh because it's correct and because I know they don't like it. The nightmare the Yazidi people suffered at the hands of Daesh 
could have been a lot worse had Canada and her allies not intervened to protect them and help contain Daesh. War is a nasty thing, and these operations take their toll on the soldiers, sailors, aviators, and special forces operators who serve on them. Remembrance Day is the day we have each year to pause and embrace each other as patriots, grateful that we can do so, and remember those many souls who did not return from their service. It's an opportunity to acknowledge the visible and invisible wounds that come from combat in the defense of our values and facing those who wish us or our friends in the world harm and taking on those who wish to oppress others using violence, misinformation, and intimidation. Oppression designed to keep them from the freedoms we have and that we may take for granted sometimes. For many of our veterans, Remembrance Day is every day. I want to share a very unique story with you. A good friend and I served in the infantry together for many years. One day, he showed me a story written on a piece of paper. He liked the story so much he had it framed. The words on this cherished paper described the close friendship and bonds that exists between warriors. Years later, he and I deployed to Afghanistan in 2002. We had been in country for a few months when he was severely wounded. In the middle of the night, he lay in the dirt, in darkness, bleeding out. He couldn't see. Some of his gear was on fire. Through the darkness came his buddy to render aid to him, and he saved his life by tending to his bleeding and keeping him warm until the helicopters came. That was 18 years ago, and recently, he recorded this old story, which he cherished so much. It is truly meaningful because he lived it. During World War I, a soldier discovered that his friend, wounded, had fallen between the trenches out in no man's land. Turning to his commanding officer, he asked, Sir, may I go and get him? The officer replied curtly, No one can live out there. I would just lose you as well. But ignoring the officer's command, he dashed from the safety of the trench to try to save his friend. With his friend on his shoulder, but now himself mortally wounded, he staggered and fell back into the trenches. The friend they discovered was now dead. The officer, in lofty tones, rebuked him. You fool, I told you not to go. Now I've lost both of you, it wasn't worth it. With his dying breath, the brave soldier replied, but sir, it was worth it. The officer was unimpressed. Worth it, he retorted, rubbish. Your friend is dead, and you soon will be. With his final words, he said, it was worth it, sir, because when I got to him, he said, Jim, I knew you'd come. Out there is the devil's no man's land. Our friends are harboring a secret, often unrealized hope that we will come with some rescue from an ever-increasing hopelessness. The tragedy is that our commanding officer, rather than rebuking fuelless impetuousness and rushing to their aid, has commanded that we leave the safety of the fold shelter and the companionship of the 90 and 9 to go and bring them in. There are no seasons to the search. It goes on around the clock throughout the calendar. No one is excused from the task. All are commanded to go. I don't know what reasons you might conjure up 
for not going or for the possibility of failure. All I know is that your friends are out there. Wounded, dying, waiting. Will you hear them say, I knew you'd come? He's an amazing soldier, and so are the guys who saved him. Tragically, others didn't make it that night, but they too had friends rush to them and try. They were the first Canadian casualties in the Afghan war. And tragically, Canada suffered more casualties in the years that followed. There is no glorifying war when we remember our fallen. There's no glory in the hell a family goes through when they stare across to the empty place at the table once occupied by their lost loved one. As part of remembrance, I urge you to research the history of Canadian conflicts because it is a story of us and our compatriots. It is also the story of Canada, a place where people have always come to escape war and live free equal, respected, and protected by the rule of law. Thank you for attending this service and remembering our fallen. They shall not grow old, and we shall remember them.